Good morning guys, how you doing? What I'm going to talk about today is the squad in the attack and I'm going to focus on the hasty battle drill, the hasty attack. I may follow it up with a couple of different examples, making it more complex, but I'm going to focus on the basic drill today. There's a little bit of uh, raindrops around, uh, I had to wait for the rain to stop so as they say if it ain't raining it ain't training so hopefully it doesn't affect it too much. So. The squad hasty attack is a drill. It's important to understand that, but it's an important training drill for a squad. It doesn't mean that in reality, depending on what situation you come up against, that that specific drill is exactly what you're going to conduct, but it gives you the toolbox, to use that expression, of the full gamut of squad drills in the attack, and therefore it's very important. Of course, once we look into it deeper, then the situation can be more complex and what this drill is essentially for is to practice a hasty attack which means that you didn't know exactly where the enemy were before they opened fire and this usually happens from an advanced to contact situation so you're moving in the anticipation of bumping the enemy but you don't know exactly where they are so that's the kind of the idea behind the hasty attack rather than a deliberate attack or a raid where you know that information and you've got a specific plan. So the hasty attack happens ad hoc, but it's a drill. It's kind of designed for a squad. If you're an independent squad, then you're, you're really going against a sort of a point, small enemy group. If it starts to get bigger than that, then it's bigger than a squad attack. If you start to get multiple firing points, depth, mutually supporting enemy positions, then clearly it's bigger than a squad attack. I, I had a comment before when I showed the, the Texas uh, uh, hasty attack video where the guys were moving to the flank and the question was, well, what happens if they bumped into a whole bunch of enemy as they went around to the flank? Well, clearly the situation has changed and they're going to have to start breaking contact from that. So. So having said all that, and, and the next part of that is that a squad attack can happen within a larger organization, such as a platoon or company attack, and therefore what you've got is a squad moving on to limited objectives, perhaps the break in battle, as you're sequencing your squads. So, But we're going to bring it back down to this basic drill, which is an independent squad conducting a hasty attack. So having said that it's a drill, what that means is that we need to create an efficient process where everybody within the squad knows what their role is, from the rifleman to the team leader, etc. However, in terms of it being a drill, it will not happen without the input of leadership. So what I mean by that is that the squad leader has to make decisions as to what he's going to do. So once you come under contact, the drill starts to roll around you, everybody performing their functions as they react to enemy fire, etc. And But it's not going to execute until the squad leader makes it execute. And he's going to have to be faced with a number of decisions. He's going to be conducting a rapid combat estimate. I'm not going into that in detail today. I'm just covering the drill. He's going to, however, decide whether he is able to assault the enemy, whether he's able to suppress the enemy, and then he's going to have to look at the ground and decide you know, how he's going to approach the enemy position. So there's an element of decision making in there that's going to launch the squad attack. Or he could even decide that it's too much, he's going to break contact, or he's going to remain, call for support, etc. So there is a decision making process on behalf of the squad leader. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go, I'm going to actually got a sand table area where I'm going to uh, go through this with, uh, with, with the little uh, uh, army men models and hopefully that's going to work to paint a good picture for you. So before we go into that, let's actually look at what the squad battle drills look like. So the first one is battle preparation. So that's going to happen before you go out. That's where we're going to get all our gear squared away, ammunition, etc. We're going to give a set of orders and we're going to go out, get ready to go on this. Let's assume we're going to be doing an advance to contact. If you want more detail on this, the whole thing in great detail is in 
the Max Velocity Tactical uh, Tactical Manual Small Unit Tactics. So it's available on Amazon. Okay, so the full detail is in there. Now, once we're on the move, we're conducting this advance to contact. And what we're going to do today for the purposes of this drill is we're going to assume that we are in a formation which is called uh, traveling overwatch. And there is uh, other ways of doing it where you're doing bounding overwatch. But for the purposes of today, we're going to be moving with a team up front and then split by a tactical bound. And then we're going to have a team behind. So the idea of that is that is that one team gets into, into enemy contact. The other team is not involved. And that gives them freedom of movement. And because of that, and because I'm assuming, which is always a bad thing, that today in the drill the point section, the point team is going to come under uh, effective enemy fire, the squad leader is going to be set back and he's going to be walking with, with the rear team. Okay? And because he doesn't want to be walking around on his own. He's, he's the ninth guy, he's this sort of independent guy. It would be great if you had more than nine guys. I'm going to run it as a nine man squad today. If he had a bodyguard, you know, whatever. Um, and I covered that during the team formations and positions of the leader talk prior to this however so now they're going to be moving they're going to be moving in traveling overwatch the first thing that's going to happen is that in this case the point team is going to come under effective enemy fire so the second battle drill is react to effective enemy fire so at an individual and team level those guys are going to be reacting taking cover, returning fire, etc. And they're going to be concerned at that time with um, locating and getting fire onto the enemy. Now, there's a little part of that. that so, where you were advancing to contact and now you've come under fire. You didn't really know where the enemy were. Now, so you have come under fire where the enemy chose to, to bring you under fire. So there's going to be a part of that where the team leader is going to want to maneuver his, his team into the best available cover. Now, getting beyond the basic drill today, it could be that that position where that, that team has come under fire is not a, a good position for su support by fire. However, for the purposes of the day, the basic drill is the team that comes under fire is going to be the support by fire team. So that team reacts and then starts to maneuver and gets itself into a better position from where to suppress the enemy. And then moving on to the next battle drill, the next battle drill is to locate the enemy. And I always say, I have a little expression, I say the two hardest things you're going to do is locate the enemy and evacuate a casualty under fire. And of course that could be happening at the same time. We either do or do not have casualties at this point. So now we've got to locate the enemy, and once we locate the enemy, we have to direct fire onto the enemy positions in order to suppress them. If we don't get the enemy suppressed, then this, none of this, this is going to work. We're not going to be able to get around and assault the enemy position because we just can't suppress them. And that's one of the squad leader's calculations. If, if, he, if it's just the team, the, initially the team leader and the squad leader, okay, if, if we really can't get this position suppressed, then it's too much. It's too much for us, okay? So, as that's going on with the point team, the squad leader's moving to a position where he can observe, and the rear team is simply moving into a security position out of the line of fire, and they're awaiting their further instructions. So they're like the right hook that's getting ready to be launched, okay? Now, not always right, left or right flanking. So, once we've located the enemy, what that point team is going to do is win the firefight. That's the next battle drill. So what they need to do is to generate enough accurate suppressive fire to gain the balance back from the enemy. They're going to regain the initiative from the enemy and they're going to suppress the enemy in place. There's an important aspect to this too, is that, is that depending on, on who this enemy force was that opened fire on you. It's, it's sort of an isolated enemy force, just a few guys. Because any more than that, it's going to be too much. So, it could be that there's some kind of shoot and scoot enemy. And so, unless you want to be chasing these guys all day and all night, 
then what you want to do, and this is another factor for consideration, is you want to fix them in position. So if by your suppression you can fix them in position, that'll give us a chance to get around and assault the enemy and actually get them in position rather than allowing them to break contact and withdraw and then engage us again and engage us again all day. So that's a consideration. Fix them in position before finishing them. Okay. Whilst the point team is going through the reaction, the getting into a best position of cover, locating the enemy, winning the firefight, during that period of time, the squad leader is moving to a position where he can observe what's going on, getting any communication he can from the, from the point team leader who's under fire, and he's observing the situation. And this is where he's going to do that combat estimate that I told you about. He's going to figure out what he's going to do. Now, for the purposes of a, of, a, um, of a hasty attack battle drill, what we want to do is try and assault the enemy at right angles or at 90 degrees from a flank at 90 degrees to our support by fire. So if our support by fire guys are here, enemy position is here, then I want to be coming in this way or I want to be coming in this way as much as we can given the ground. So what that squad leader is going to do is he's going to look for a covered, concealed approach. Because as he moves his team around to the assault, when he conducts the assault, which is the, or the attack, which is the next part of the battle drill, he's going to conduct an approach, an assault, and a fight through of the enemy position. So he's looking for a place to get around to the flank where he can then stage that team, and then that team is going to assault the enemy position and then it's going to fight through or assault through the enemy position. That's what he's looking to achieve and that's what I'm going to show you today on the sand table. There's various different techniques and drills that we can actually use for that assault and that fight through. I'm going to show the basic bounding forwards by buddy pairs, getting too close to the enemy position and then assaulting through as a team. Once that team has moved through the enemy position and now we've destroyed the enemy in place, then we are, we're moving into the reorganization or consolidation phase where that team is going to be up there on the enemy position and then we've got the support by fire team which now needs to move and rejoin them on the enemy position. Bear in mind this is a very vulnerable stage because if we've got any depth or mutually supporting enemy positions out there, then this is where they, we're going to have problems, right? So, and that's where it starts to get bigger, if it starts to get bigger than just a squad attack. Um, there's a couple of ways of that uh, team rejoining. You can move them from their support by fire position straight up onto the enemy position, and that's a simple draw where the assault team has moved through, and then the support by fire team moves through, and then we're going to consolidate and allocate sectors, and we're going to conduct enemy prisoner of war, clearance of the position, etc. Another way to do it is, is if, particularly if you suspect mines or booby traps, etc., given that the assault team are moved around to the flank using that conceal, covered and concealed approach and then assaulted, we know that that route is largely clear. So the other way is that the, the support by fire team, once the assault team's on the objective, that they can come around the same route and move in. That's just detail at this point. So I hit a couple of, of points up there, a quick talk through of the squad hasty attack drill. If you, if you want to read up on the detail, it's in the tactical manual. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the sand table and we're going to go through and actually show this on the sand table. Please bear in mind that uh, the models only do certain things, so I basically can't make them to go prone, so they're going to be standing or they're going to be kneeling. Distances might not be perfect. You want to think about this as if it's a squad hasty attack, it's pretty much going to happen within a 300 meter bubble. Because the, 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 the range of the squad weapon is not really effective beyond that. So, and you don't want to be separating too much. So basically, this is a 300 meter bubble, roughly, for a squad attack. The scales on the model are not exactly perfect, but hopefully it's going to show the general idea. Thanks very much. Okay guys, what we've got here is we've got the, the sand table model and we have an enemy position which is up here. 
we have a stream running down this way, a stream running down this way, and a small piece of high ground. Represented here is the squad which is moving in this direction towards the enemy position, which they don't know is there right now. We've got the point team here, moving in an arrowhead formation, and then a little bit closer than would be ideal, but scaled to the model, we've got the squad leader and the second team moving back here in a column or half attack formation. As the team is moving, the enemy position is concealed up here. They do not know exactly where this position is. They are advancing to contact. At some point, the enemy position is going to engage and bring the point team under effective enemy fire. For the purposes of this, even though they're pretty close, we're assuming that these guys are not actually, the second team, are not actually under effective enemy fire at this point. What will happen here is that the point team are going to conduct their individual reactor contact drills and the second team are going to get into a security position now that the contact has begun and the squad leader is going to move up to a position uh, where he can best observe what's going on. So without being able to really show prone position, we now have this team have conducted their initial reaction and they've gone to ground. The squad leader is moving up here to a position where he can best observe. Again, he's probably going to be prone at this point. And then these guys to the rear have taken a security position, awaiting further orders from the squad leader. What this team leader is going to do here in this circumstance is he's going to fight his team by buddy pairs into this piece of cover of this creek that's just in front of him. He's moving up his right hand uh, pair into the creek. He's now moved his left hand pair up into the creek. And now what we have is we have this, this point team in a decent uh, position of cover. They have no casualties at this point, according to the drill we're just about to run. And this position of cover and concealment here gives them the ability to actually conduct a support by fire position from this location here. The squad leader is going to be observing this. What these guys are going to do now is once they're in position, they can now fully locate and communicate the position of the enemy forces, which are up here. And let's assume that's about a hundred meter distance. And using fire control orders, the team leader here can begin to direct fire onto the enemy in order to win the firefight regain the initiative and suppress the enemy in place. What this team leader is going to do is he's going to um, mix between rapid fire, initially to gain fire superiority, and slow it down to deliberate fire to keep the enemy suppressed, but also to conserve ammunition. What he can do is he can, on the call of the squad leader, he can change up to rapid fire to cover vulnerable moments when the, uh, the, the, the other team is moving or going into the assault. So these are all things, all considerations that we can do. The squad leader has made his combat estimate. He's going to leave this team here as the support by fire team. And what he's going to do is he's going to lead the other team around to the right flank using this stream bed.
there are considerations here. The squad leader can, can uh, he can just send this team. He can send the team or he can go with them. He can allow the team leader here to prosecute the assault or he himself as the squad leader can jump in that team and go forward as a five-man team. These are all just things that the squad leader is going to uh, practice and decide what he's going to do on the day. These are just options. Squad leader's moving back. He's quickly going to brief these guys as to what he's going to do. This should be a not a long brief because it's a drill. All he really has to tell these guys is, we're going right flanking, follow me. And they will know exactly the deal of, of what we're going to do at this point. At this point, the squad leader is going to lead the assault team out from their security position into the covered and concealed approach on the right flank for a right flanking assault. This is going to be the approach part of the attack. So we have the approach, the assault, and the fight through. Now, this is a vulnerable area if we look at this model because the team was moving from back here across into the, into the dead ground over here where they may be visible to the enemy up there. If that's the case, they may have to either crawl, they may be able to use smoke, there may be vegetation here, or, as previously mentioned, one other thing they can do is call for rapid fire from the support by fire team to give them more cover as they move across this, in the case of this terrain model, what would be a, a vulnerable area. Squad leader continues to move and lead the assault team into the creek and up onto the right flank. What you should consider at this point is you may have had to run, maybe perhaps across this bit of uh, vulnerable area here, but you don't want to be completely exhausted by the time you get up to the enemy position. So this needs to be paced. It also needs to be paced against what you consider to be further likely threats in the area, the danger of perhaps running into further enemy as you move up onto the right flank. So this should not be a mad sprint. You still have to apply security, and that's one of the considerations why it's going to take a little bit of time for these guys to get up onto the flank. These guys need to have sufficient ammunition and also some fire control discipline to slow the fire down to sustain fire so that we don't run out of ammunition. Ammunition is time in combat. If these guys run out of ammunition before these guys get on the flank, then we've got problems. Ideally, as the assault team conducts its approach, they want to be in a covered or concealed position, not only so they can't be targeted by the enemy, but hopefully the enemy does not realize that they are actually moving up on their right flank. So ideally, as they get up onto the right flank, to their assault position, the enemy does not know they are there. Similarly, these guys are going to be in this position for a period of time. What they need to do is to have good individual battle discipline so that they are moving positions, etc., rather than just laying in one position. Okay, the, the, the team leader here is going to be responsible for fire control and ensuring that we are suppressing all the various enemy positions up there. Individuals are going to be responsible for moving their position so they're not an obvious target. Now the squad leader moves this team into their assault position. In this case, he's going to remain central to the four-man team. He's going to command it and uh, move it through the assault. We have the support by fire position down here. We have the assault position in a right flanking position up here. And the enemy is here. Hopefully at this point, the enemy does not know the assault is going to come from over here. They may or may not at this point. What we do, however, have is a right angle, 90 degrees, between support by fire and assault. What that's going to mean is that, is that this is the, the optimal position for as the assault come through, it's the optimal position to allow these guys to fire at this position for as long as possible. As these guys in the assault get closer and closer, the support by fire element is going to have to lift and shift fire away. If there's nothing further to shoot at out here, they will just simply provide flank protection. But as they get closer, then they're going to be moving their fire away with a relative, usually we use 30 degrees, a safety angle between, and the team leader will, will measure it. He'll just 
um, you can use a hand angle, basically to get, the as they get to in 30 degrees, he can shift, fire away, or cease fire, and just cover the flank at this point, in case there are any depth or mutually supporting positions. There are any number of ways to conduct this assault. What I'm going to show here is that basically, because we are in this nice uh, uh, creek bed here, basically on signal from the squad leader, the guys are going to move up to a position where they can observe the enemy, and now we're going to give rapid fire from here. So what we've got now is rapid fire coming from over here, coordinated between the two, and now we've got rapid fire from here, so now the enemy is in a crossfire, a 90 degree angle crossfire. Hopefully this is going to cause the enemy a lot of problems at this time. Assuming they're all still alive at this point. What the squad leader is going to do is he's now going to launch the assault in buddy pairs through the enemy position. The assault team now starts to move forwards in buddy pairs. We've got the right hand buddy pair moving first, supported by the left hand buddy pair. This is basic fire movement in buddy pairs. It's important that the as they move forwards, they don't converge, that we maintain our line so that we get coverage of the enemy position as we move through it. As we move through, we're moving in short bounds, maintaining our lateral spacing so that we don't shut down any safety angles as we're moving. Once we get close to the enemy position, what we're going to do is, in this case, the squad leader is going to call for the assault, the assault through. At that point, we're going to move through online through the enemy position. This is not a sprint. It's a simple steady move through, guns up. What we're looking for is we're looking for the bodies of the enemy. We don't want to leave live enemy behind us. We're basically going to move through, finishing off the enemy, as we move through the position. Recall that as they move through, these guys have already lifted and shifted fire away. At this point, if there's no other further enemy to shoot at, these guys are now just observing the flank. Having conducted the assault through the enemy position, when he considers he's through the enemy position, the squad leader will call limit, limit of advance, LOA, LOA, LOA. And these guys are going to halt. They're going to obviously observe. And then what we're going to move is we're going to move into the consolidation phase, where, as mentioned, these guys are going to be up here on the position. The support by fire are going to rejoin, either coming straight in or moving around the way the assault team went. Once we get onto the position, we're going to uh, get into all-round defense, and then we're going to conduct clearance on the position, various duties that have to happen once we've uh, assaulted through the enemy position, enemy prisoner of war, etc. Okay, guys, there you have it. We'll see how that comes out. And uh, if we like this uh, method of instruction, we can, uh, we can do a bunch of other stuff like this. Thanks very much. Catch you next time.